Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, I'm going to show you why 0 to the 0th power is equal to 1. This is something that's not very intuitive, but I'm going to show you the proof of why this is right now. All right, so first let's do a little bit of review of exponent rules and what they mean, just the very basics. So if I have something written as 3 to the 4th power, that means I take the number 3, which is the base, and multiply it four times together. So 3 to the 4th power would be 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. be four threes. If I have 5 to the 6th power, that means I'm going to multiply 5 times 5, and I'm going to do that six times. So here I have five sixes multiplied together, so on and so forth. Now, when I have zero raised to most powers, like one, two, three, so on and so forth, I just take that number of zeros and multiply them together. For example, zero squared would just be zero times zero. That's pretty obvious, it's just zero, right? If I have zero to the fourth power, it'd be zero times zero times zero times zero, which we know is zero. Now, not written here, there's some other rules that if you raise any number to the zeroth power, it equals one. For example, if I took the same three but raised it to the zero power, it's one. If I have the number five raised to the zero power, it's one. So the question is, if I raise zero to the zeroth power, is it gonna be zero or one? That's the fundamental question here. So here's what I want to prove. Zero to the zeroth power is one. What I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna express this as a limit. So this is gonna involve some basic calculus. And notice zero and zero are the exact same number. So the way I'm gonna express this limit is it's the limit of x raised to the x power, but I'm gonna let x approach zero and it's gonna approach, approach from the positive side. Um, remember that you can't just simply evaluate this at zero. Um, because we don't know what that is at this point. We're actually trying to figure it out. So I have to approach zero from one side or the other, and I'm gonna to choose to do the positive side just to make the math easy. The question is, how do I evaluate x to the x? Well, I actually can't do that directly, but I can use this substitution that I've just thrown in here. So it turns out that x can be rewritten as e to the natural log of x. And that's because natural log and exponential, as in e, are inverses of each other, which means they undo each other and leave only what's left in the argument of the natural log, which is x. So it's x. So the x right here, the base x, can actually be written, rewritten as e to the natural log of x. So I can take this x to the x and rewrite it as e to the natural log of x, and then there's still this x here, so times x, although I've written the x first. Okay, and it's still the limit as x approaches zero from the positive side, All right? Now one thing that's nice about exponential functions is if you have a limit outside of the exponential function, what you're allowed to do is throw the limit inside the exponential function. So now instead of being the limit of e to the x times natural log of x, I can now rewrite this as e to the limit of x times the natural log of x. So what I've done is I've thrown the limit inside the exponential function. So now the exponential is on the outside and the limits evaluation at zero from the positive side has not changed, okay? Now, if I were to imagine just plugging in zero in for each x here, x would just be zero, right? And what's natural log of zero? Well, here I have the graph of natural log of x, and you can see as x approaches zero, as it gets closer and closer to the y-axis, we see that the function is blowing up to infinity in the negative direction. So this limit would be uh, zero times negative infinity. And when you have something in the form zero times either plus or minus infinity, you have what's called indeterminate form, and that's when you know you can use L'Hopital's rule. So remember, L'Hopital's rule is applicable when you have something that's either zero times infinity, or you have infinity over infinity, a quotient, or zero over zero, another quotient, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually pull this x into the denominator here as one over x, so I have it written here. We have e to the limit as x approaches zero from the positive side of natural log of x divided by one over x. Notice I didn't change the value of this argument inside the limit, okay? And this h above the equal sign, this means I'm about to apply L'Hopital's rule, all right? 
And what L'Hopital's rule says is if I want to evaluate a limit that's an indeterminate form, what I can do is take the derivative of the numerator and then take the derivative of the denominator. And I basically keep doing that until it's in a form where I can evaluate it. Okay? So I'm going to take the derivative of both the numerator and the denominator. That's my application of L'Hopital's rule. The derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x, so that's my numerator. And then if I differentiate 1 over x in the denominator, that becomes negative 1 over x squared. Okay, Which I'm going to actually multiply both the numerator and the denominator now by x squared. The reason I'm going to do that is that's going to get rid of this 1 over x squared in the denominator. So I show you that right here. Both the numerator and the denominator are going to be multiplied by x squared. In the denominator, I'll have x squared divided by x squared with a negative sign. So all that leaves is negative 1. And in the numerator, I have x squared divided by x. So all I have left is an x. And now I can simplify this. Just pull the negative sign up here. I have e and it's to the limit as x goes to 0 from the positive side of negative x. And now I can simply just plug in 0 for here. The limit would just be 0 because if I plug in 0 here it would just be the limit of 0. So all I have is e to the 0. e to the 0 is 1. And that is the proof that 0 to the 0 power is 1. Okay. And if you forget what exponential function looks like it looks like this, and if you evaluate this at 0, you're right at 1, which is right on the, it's actually the y-intercept of that function. Okay, So um, a little bit of a complicated proof. Um, you have to know a little bit of exponent and logarithm laws here, and L'Hopital's rule, but interesting note, 0 to the 0 power is 1. Okay, Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.